Hello semua dan salam sejahtera. Nama saya Sharon Wee. Apa khabar semua? Jadi hari yang begitu terang benderang, harap semua sihat dan sekarang ni industri sukan ada yang dah boleh bermula dan para atlet ya dengan mengikuti SOP dan sebagainya ada yang dah boleh berlatih, badminton, bowling tapi ada juga yang perlu menunggulah untuk memulakan latihan dan pada hari ini saya sebagai moderator Sekali lagi nama saya Sharon Wee, bekas pemain squash kebangsaan, moderator untuk webinar Akademi Kejurulatihan Kebangsaan di bawah ISN iaitu Mind the Gap, Women Can Coach. Jurulatih wanita cukup penting dan juga jurulatih-jurulatih di luar sana terutama di Malaysia yang melahirkan memang ramai atlet-atlet negara ada yang dah masuk uh, Sukan Olimpik, Commonwealth, Sukan Asia, ada yang sudah menjadi pemain nombor satu dunia juga. Dan um, sekali lagi kita melalui situasi yang extraordinary uh, sudah pasti dengan adanya COVID-19 ataupun coronavirus di seluruh dunia kita melalui PKP ya. Uh, Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan selepas itu PKPB bersyarat dan sekarang ni Um, PKPP iaitu PKP pemulihan dan kita lihat memang banyak sektor lah sektor ekonomi, sektor sukan dah slowly um, buka kepada semua untuk berniaga dan sektor sukan antaranya atlet-atlet yang bersedia Road to Tokyo uh, telah pun uh, masuk ke camp di Bukit Jalil melalui swab test dan sebagainya jika semua ok, sihat akan memulakan latihan. Jadi kita sebagai peminat sukan dan rakyat Malaysia wish all the athletes all the very best. Termasuklah Julatih. Saya rasa Julatih pun dah you know cannot wait to give the very best to para athlete. Uh, not necessary as the Olympic tapi Julatih peringkat sekolah, peringkat daerah, peringkat negeri, peringkat kebangsaan. Ada yang buat webinar macam ni lah. Uh, pastikan atlet-atlet mereka berlatih dan ada yang kat rumah tu siap dengan gym work macam-macam uh, kita buat shadow macam badminton dan sebagainya uh, pada hari ini penting juga kita uh, sebagai peminat ataupun sebagai atlet julatih komuniti sukan di Malaysia ini ingin melihat sukan di Malaysia semakin membangun dan antaranya fokus kita sudah pasti kepada kejulatihan dan inilah di bawah Institut Sukan Negara yang memimpin program uh, di bawah Akademi Kejulatihan Kebangsaan ISN ni ingin berkongsi lah uh, educational program seperti ini dan juga mendengar daripada legend-legend kita, ikon-ikon kita apa yang mereka melalui experience mereka dan sebagainya dan uh, jangan lupa juga ya kepada anda semua yang mengikuti live Facebook uh, live Facebook uh, Akademi Kejulatihan Kebangsaan anda boleh ke AKK Facebook untuk mengikuti live ini dan terus beri komen dan sebagainya untuk kita bincangkan dan please go to your handphone and maybe share lah kepada kawan-kawan semua adik-adik semua julati di luar sana ya saya sendiri hari tu dah tak boleh tahan. Dah lama tak main squash kan. Badminton pun okey lah sebab saya memang suka badminton. Tujuh setengah pagi saya pergi kat taman terbuka tu main dengan kawan-kawan. So saya rasa macam atlet. It's always an atlet lah. Huh? Whether you go jogging or play any other sports. So I try to share with all my friends live Facebook ni. Dekat Akademi Kejulatian Kebangsaan Facebook. Kita punya guest speakers for today bukan calang-calang orang. Bekas atlet negara memang telah pun memimpin sukan negara dan sebagainya. Dan di sini juga kita ingin mendapatkan reaksi mereka tentang Mind the Gap Women Can Coach ni. Secara rasmi kita akan start 11 o'clock eh. Okay. So maknanya anda semua memang ramai yang melihat ataupun viewers that come on the, the Facebook for Mind the Gap Women Can Coach. One more time. Salam sejahtera semua. Welcome to 
uh, live Facebook webinar Akademi Kejulatian Kebangsaan di bawah Institut Sukan Negara AKK which is Mind the Gap Women Can Coach. Nama saya Sharon Wee, bekas pemain squash negara dan juga personality Sukan TV uh, sebagai penyampai sukan, commentator, host dan sebagainya dan saya juga merupakan Julate level 3 dan advisor untuk AKK Media Management dan memang aktif dalam sukan, masih aktif. Ha, kalau dulu wakil negara 20 tahun dalam squash kan dan stop tahun 2010 berkecimpung dalam broadcasting, dalam dunia um, moderating sebagai speaker dan memang saya very very focus on the empowerment of youth and women and everybody in sports and of course as a leader as well in sports and other uh, industry as well. Jadi pada hari ini saya tidak kesorangan seperti yang saya, seperti yang saya katakan ada tiga uh, speakers tapi objektif. Objektif untuk webinar ini adalah untuk platform uh, meningkatkan pengetahuan, kesedaran tentang sesuatu topik, perkongsian antara satu sama lain, memberi inspirasi, galak lebih ramai terlibat dalam industri sukan sebagai kejaya terutama sebagai julate. Terutama kita nak concentrate for today julate wanita. Boleh saya katakan julate wanita ni kita need a lot of encouragement for them. Sebab whether we like it or not daripada data yang saya dapat 20% saja jurulate wanita elit di Malaysia. So what went wrong? Or what can we improve? That's why today kita nak bincangkan kepada semua. Jadi terima kasihlah kepada anda semua yang menyaksikan uh, webinar ini dan saya harapkan anda boleh beri komen. ya, yeah? Beri komen, pendapat so jadi kita boleh bincangkan. Dan rundown untuk hari ini sudah pasti adalah uh, keynote speaker daripada speaker utama kita dan kita akan terus ke topik pertama, topik kedua dan juga ada jendela daripada AKK untuk beri update. Tanpa melingarkan masa, baiklah kita akan terus memperkenalkan speaker yang pertama. Memang kita semua respect iaitu Datuk Marina Chin. Datuk Marina Chin merupakan chairman of AKK advisory panel, bekas atlet olahraga, bekas pengetua SSBJ, bekas pengarah bahagian sukan KPM dan juga chef di Mission Sea Games. 2017 di Kuala Lumpur. Welcome Datuk Marina. Thank you. <laughs> so we are very happy to have our second speaker. Memang terkenal lah orang dia very bubbly tapi garang tu. Ha. <laughs> ha. Iaitu coach Chu Kon Lee iaitu national netball coach yang juga merupakan bekas pemain kebangsaan. Hi coach Chu. Hello. Hi Sharon. Nice to have you. And you. we also have with us our third speaker. Orangnya tinggi, pantas dalam gelanggang. So she is coach Yung Zinwin, iaitu National Basketball Women Coach, juga merupakan bekas pemain kebangsaan, very disciplined person, very strict coach. So hi coach Yung. Uh, hello Sharon. Good morning. Uh, good, morning. good morning everybody. <laughs> So pada hari ini kita akan bincangkan tentang uh, Mind the Gap, Women Can Coach, a very important topic. Um, and all our three speakers uh, are very experienced in sports, be it in sports administration, ex-national athlete, as a coach and a women leader as well as someone who are very, very passionate in sports. Jadi pada hari ini ISN melalui AKK telah memberi ruang untuk kita bincangkan Tapi sebelum kita pergi ke keynote speaker ya dari Datuk Marina, saya nak bertanya sikit lah kepada setiap daripada speaker. What is your defin definition ya Datuk Marina, women can coach. Apa definasi anda? Uh, just like a woman can do any job now, I believe that uh, women can become top-notch coaches for any sports in this country too. Perfect, perfect. That's a good start. I'm <laughs> actually dah panas ni, dah warm up ni. 
So how about Coach Chu? What's your definition women can coach? Uh, bagi saya, wanita tu memang power lah. Ya, yeah. segala tugasan yang diberi atau you know kita nak nak coach ke atau sebagainya kita ada uh, kebolehan dan kemampuan untuk mem, uh, melatih atlet-atlet kita yang di luar sana tu. Yes, I agree ya. Eh. Memang betul. Wanita ni macam superwoman lah. Dia kena masak, jaga rumah, hmm. jaga keluarga, kena kerja, kena coach dan sebagainya. So kita nak melihat. Bagaimana untuk tarik mereka ya, untuk berkecimpung dalam dunia kejulatian juga. Jadi Coach Yung, uh, your pendapat tentang women can coach, apa pendapat anda tentang perkara ini? Uh, saya nak uh, to say that uh, we need to uh, to uh, have a, how to say that <laughs> uh, good image and uh, cannot uh, be lost uh, with the man and give the more uh, power to your own uh, confidence out women can coach everywhere totally agree coach Jung. that means uh, women has to believe it in themselves be confident yep. be proud with our own skill and it's yep. all about mindset um, naturally yep. sports kan um, Sports means a lot of men um, do sports but as years goes by, lebih ramai wanita berkecimpung dalam sukan dan sebenarnya menaikkan nama negara. Kalau di Malaysia kita ada Datuk Nicole David, kita ada Pandai Lai Rinong, kita ada Datuk Marina, kita ada Coach Chu, kita ada Coach Yung, uh, ramai lagi. Kita ada uh, apa tu atlet-atlet yang telah menaikkan nama negara di peringkat sekolah, daerah, negeri dan juga negara untuk kita bersama-sama melihat where is the gap. The gap is getting closer and closer in sports industry itself, not necessary coaching. So yang ni I nak tanya sikit daripada Datuk Marina before you go to your keynote hmm. speaker, do you agree with that the gap has become closer and closer? Uh, yes, I believe that the gap has become closer uh, in the media industry. Uh, in coaching, I believe there's still a lot more to be done because we need to more encourage many more young girls to get themselves involved with sports. And because of parents' perceptives and things like that, I think it would help a lot if we had more women coaches coaching young girls. Yep, I agree with that. We need to encourage them more, especially girls, women to be involved in sports, especially in the sports industry. Um, you know, 20% elite women coaches in Malaysia, that is too far away, the gap actually. I know there are certain parts is getting closer. You know, more women athletes working in Malaysia than Svaganya. My own experience, um, level 3 coaching, um, when I stopped playing after 20 years representing Malaysia, I stopped playing in 2010. Wanted to be bersemangat to be national women squash coach. Uh, but the offer that came back, I feel it's not so reasonable and fair. But after a few, a few years, ex-male uh, teammate of mine got offered as a coach. And the offer is like five times more. So, where, where's the gap and what happened actually, you know? So, this is when we want to talk about why this thing happened and where is, where is the SOP and where's the focus towards women coaching in Malaysia. So, tanpa melengahkan masa, baiklah kita akan serahkan kepada Datuk Marina untuk keynote speaker yang bertajuk develop, Developing Female Coaches. So silakan Datuk Marina. Then we'll come back after that to bincangkan bersama. Terima kasih Sharon. Uh, selamat pagi, salam sejahtera kepada semua. Terlebih dahulu sebelum saya mulakan saya ingin ucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada Akademi Kejulatihan uh, Kebangsaan kerana memberi saya peluang untuk berkongsi pengalaman dengan anda semua 
uh, dengan harapan kita semua dapatlah mainkan peranan yang kecil kita sendiri untuk mempertingkatkan penglibatan wanita dalam sukan. Bukan saja sebagai jurulatih, sebagai seorang atlet. Apa jua bidang uh, yang terdapat dalam sukan oleh kerana saya rasa uh, ini sangat diperlukan. Right? Uh, hari ini saya akan bincangkan tentang development tentang women coaches atau pembangunan jurulatih wanita. Alright? Okay. Apa yang kita maksudkan dengan pembangunan jurulatih wanita? Saya dalam masa saya nak sediakan uh, rencana ini, saya telah uh, buat banyak research tentang uh, apa yang sedang berlaku di merata dunia dan saya terbaca rencana daripada the Asian, uh, sorry not Asian, uh, Women's Sports and Fitness Foundation England, saya terbaca rencana daripada New Zealand, uh, rencana daripada this thing, Basketball American for Women, uh, terbaca juga Australian article. So, saya dapati bahawa ini bukan sahaja satu masalah di Malaysia tetapi masalah yang uh, didapati boleh dikatakan di seluruh dunia lah. Saya tak tahulah bukan kemungkinan bukan semua dunia tetapi banyak negara yang saya baca dia orang punya articles uh, this thing and this is where I got a lot of my ideas from and masa saya bandingkan dengan keadaan di Malaysia saya dapati bahawa uh, memang samalah keadaannya di Malaysia. Okay so perkara yang pertama yang kemungkinan kita kena kaji ialah kenapa kita perlukan lebih ramai jurulatih wanita. Uh, kalau kita nak katakan lelaki pun boleh jadi jurulatih this thing. Tetapi tahu tak anda di sekolah guru pendidikan jasmani lelaki tidak boleh mengajar pelajar perempuan. Ini adalah satu dasar yang uh, this thing. Uh, ketika saya jadi uh, guru pendidikan jasmani di sekolah. Cikgu wanita boleh ngajar budak lelaki tapi cikgu lelaki tak boleh ngajar uh, budak perempuan pendidikan jasmani. Uh, kemungkinan ini adalah untuk mengesyorkan keselamatan dan uh, this thing, dan mungkin keselesaan pelajar-pelajar uh, perempuan. Tapi uh, dalam sukan, dalam sukan kita tidak mengamalkan praktikal atau praktis itu. Dan saya rasa uh, untuk membincangkan uh, topik developing women coaches, mungkin kita kena faham why we need more women coaches. Okay? Kalau kita tengok kepada national, multinational sports contingents, tak kira lah Malaysia ke mana-mana kalau untuk SEA Games, untuk Asian Games, untuk Olympics, Olympics maybe kurang sikit. Tapi SEA Games especially, 50% make up of the team is by women athletes, okay? Then 20% coaches is not only coaches. Yang coaches ini bukan saja digunakan sebagai coaches tetapi mereka selalu kena double up sebagai chaperon. Padahal the men don't need to do that. Men, they have their managers and they have their this thing. And saya rasa sedih oleh kerana semasa saya jadi chef de mission uh, Sukan C tahun 2017, Mula-mulanya saya dapati bahawa ada lebih sedikit managers perempuan untuk women's team. Tetapi as they got nearer to the SEA Games, managers dah tukar jadi men. So I don't see why there was a necessity for that tetapi uh, itulah hakikatnya. Okay. So kalau kita ada lebih kurang 50% saya rasa perempuan atlet-atlet wanita mungkin akan lebih selesa jika ada lebih ramai pegawai wanita tak kira lah coaches atau pegawai di mana mereka boleh jumpa dan selesaikan masalah mereka. Okay. Dan baru-baru ini kita dapati bahawa bukan saja di Malaysia tetapi di seluruh dunia banyak kes yang tersebar sekarang tentang sexual harassment, abuse cases and uh, this thing dan uh, ramai orang tak faham 
tentang environment sukan, relationship between coach dengan atlet. Dan uh, di environment ini, kadang-kadang atlet walaupun mereka di harass dan sebagainya, tak berani cakap oleh kerana kemungkinan peluang untuk dipilih mewakili negara tidak akan berlaku because the coach makes the decision who represents the country in the team. So if a man coach wants something, you know, they, 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 they create that kind of environment where it's not comfortable for the girls. So we need more women coaches. All right. The other thing is, macam saya kata tadi, kita ada lebih kurang 50% atau lebih wakil wanita dalam sukan antarabangsa in our national multi-sports teams. Okay. Dan mereka ni, pada ketika ni, kebanyakan mereka bukan saja berpengalaman tetapi berpendidikan. They are all very well educated. And a lot of them have passion. They want to give back to the sports. Tetapi tidak di uh, tidak menemui peluang untuk melibatkan diri sebagai seorang jurulatih. Okay. And kalaulah kita tidak create atau wujudkan peluang ini, kita, this thing, we are losing this invaluable expertise. Not only do they have an expertise as a player, so they know all the rules, they know all the skills, they have that experience of international competition, and they have the education behind them, but not the chance to coach. Okay, so we are losing a lot. Like I said earlier, kalaulah kita ada lebih ramai wanita, Suka tak suka, ini adalah hakikat. Women coaches understand the psychological and social uh, pressures female athletes may experience. Because we are women ourselves. So, there are some things that female athletes will not want to discuss with the male coaches. And it may play on their mind. So, kalau lah katakan dia tak ada peluang untuk berbincang dengan siapa-siapa, it may affect their performance when they are in competition. So why can't we provide that environment where they can go into their uh, competition arena stress-free? Okay. And kalau dulu uh, kejulatihan nampak sebagai satu kerjaya yang uh, berpihak kepada orang lelaki oleh kerana wanita dianggapkan sebagai bertanggungjawab di atas rumah tangga uh, dan sebagainya. Tetapi kalau kita tengok pada zaman ini, this is the global society. We have women engineers, we have women pilots, we have apa sajalah kerja-kerja yang yang boleh dilakukan oleh lelaki. Ya, yeah, boleh juga dilakukan oleh seorang wanita. So, why not in coaching? Saya rayulah kepada wanita-wanita yang minat dalam sukan dan sebagainya. Anggapkanlah coaching as a viable career option. Okay. Bermaksud, jangan fikir nak jadi accountant, jangan fikir. Kalau you minat dalam sukan, jangan sahaja fikir the traditional mindset di mana kita katakan, oh, uh, wanita jadi cikgu, jadi lawyer, jadi apa, uh, accountant. You can also become a successful coach. Okay. The only things that are needed is you have your knowledge, you have your skills, and if you can prove that you can do everything that any man coach can do, there is no reason why you cannot succeed. Okay, what are the challenges faced by women coaches? Cabaran-cabaran yang dihadapi oleh women coaches atau jurulatih wanita yang ingin berkecimpung dalam bidang kejurulatihan. Satu adalah access to facilities and resources. Okay. Uh, memang ini bukan sahaja satu masalah yang dihadapi oleh uh, wanita tetapi kemungkinan kurang sikit kepada orang lelaki. 
facilities, resources, facilities tempat latihan, kemudahan latihan dan sebagainya. Okay. Kalau lah kita uh, secara serius nak melibatkan uh, lebih ramai wanita dalam kejulatihan, kita harus mencari jalan untuk membolehkan mereka. Dan daripada sini, saya ingin merayulah kepada guru-guru sekolah, guru-guru wanita di sekolah. Sekurang-kurangnya di, di sekolah ada sedikit facilities, gunakan itu dan mula daripada sana. Kedua ialah family commitments. Biasalah orang wanita yang macam saya kata tadi ditanggungjawabkan uh, segala urusan di rumah tangga. Ya, yeah. Saya ingin merayu kepada kawan-kawan lelaki saya lah. Sokonglah isteri anda, anak anda, adik anda, kakak anda jika mereka membuat keputusan untuk menjadi seorang jurulatih. Oleh kerana itu juga satu kerjaya yang boleh membawa kepuasan kepada diri dia. Right? Kadang-kadang perempuan sendiri dia lack confidence. Dia tak tak apa dia tak berapa uh, keyakinan diri. Keyakinan diri boleh ke saya buat macam tu dan sebagainya. Dan saya rasa ini tidak seharus timbul pada zaman ini oleh kerana wanita-wanita lain telah tunjukkan bahawa ia boleh dilakukan. Uh, this thing, saya merupakan wanita yang pertama menjadi pengetua sekolah sukan dan setakat ini masih lagi hanya satu orang wanita saja yang pernah jadi pengetua sekolah sukan. Dan uh, saya rasa this thing, uh, dalam kerja-kerja lain juga wanita telah tunjukkan mereka boleh buat. So why not in the field of sports? Dalam uh, bidang sukan sekarang dalam bidang kejulatan kita sudah ada beberapa orang role models macam Coach Chu, Coach Yung dan uh, this thing. Tetapi saya rasa sedih oleh kerana kebanyakan daripada female coaches in elite level in Malaysia masih lagi daripada luar negara. Dan kita terpaksa bayar gaji yang tinggi untuk mendapatkan expertise mereka. Why can't we develop our own? So women, build up your confidence. There's nothing that we cannot do if we don't try. Okay. Lack of support. Lack of support, this thing, yes. Macam saya kata tadi, kalaulah uh, anda seorang cikgu, mungkin dekat sekolah, Uh, kalau anda tunjukkan uh, minat yang sungguh and you are willing to 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 go that extra mile to develop a certain sports in the school, I am sure the school administration will support you. Tetapi untuk wanita-wanita lain, that is thing, kita tidak ada uh, program-program yang boleh membantu atau menyakinkan anda. So kemungkinan kita kena tengok kepada... Uh, macam mana kita boleh wujudkan perempuan untuk membantu mereka yang ingin melibatkan diri dalam kejulatihan. Attitudes and prejudices ini adalah pandangan dan tanggapan uh, masyarakat. Ya, yeah. ada yang uh, this thing, uh, menganggapkan bahawa adalah tidak, tidak sesuai untuk jadi jurulatih bagi seorang wanita. Ada yang nampak, oh, no lah, I better go to that man coach. I think he will be better dan sebagainya models. Kita ada. Tetapi tak cukup. So we need to build more role models. And how do we build more role models? By giving them the opportunity to prove themselves. Kalau kita tak bagi peluang itu, macam mana mereka nak buktikan kepada masyarakat, kepada negara kita bahawa mereka boleh buat. Alright? Okay. Ini adalah beberapa cadangan yang uh, saya akan kemukakan untuk mengembangkan uh, wanita-wanita dalam bidang kejulatihan dan ini uh, adalah the distinct yang telah dilakukan di beberapa buah negara dan uh, uh, boleh diadaptasikan kepada keadaan di Malaysia. Satu adalah policy decisions, positive discrimination. Biasanya discrimination tidak digalakkan tetapi apa yang dimaksudkan dengan positive discrimination ialah di mana kita sengaja sengaja uh, 
Okay, sekarang dalam dunia kerjaya, in any career, big big multinational companies, kalaulah mereka ada dua candidate yang sama dia punya distinct dia punya qualifications, mereka akan pilih orang yang ada sukan. Alright, so all I'm saying is Semasa kita nak pilih jurulatih untuk sesuatu pasukan, katakanlah national team ke, state sukma team ke dan sebagainya, if it's a, a sports played by women, women's hockey, women's football dan sebagainya, make it a positive discrimination decision by insisting that we have women coaches on the team. Itulah maksud saya. Okay, policy decisions. Talent identification. Di antara atlet-atlet yang kita disting, yang kita uh, latih, yang mewakili negara di mana kita nampak kemungkinan mereka sudah sampai ke tahap di mana uh, mereka terpaksa fikirkan uh, persaraan daripada sukan. Dan persaraan tu sepatutnya untuk sebagai seorang pemain sahaja. Okay. Kalau mereka didapati semasa dalam latihan dan sebagai bahawa mereka mempunyai leadership qualities, they are very skillful, they have a lot of knowledge and they know. The main thing is with ex-athletes is mereka kebanyakan kenal the young talents in the country. So it's easy for them to 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 have rapport with these young talents. So this is what we mean by talent identification when we're talking about uh, developing women coaches. Role modeling and mentoring. Yes, we have Miss Chu, we have Miss Yung, we have a few other people like out there like uh, Roslinda Samsu and all these people. Uh, look up to them, learn from them, you know, and hopefully we can set up a mentoring program where they, you can come up to them and, and get advice and things like that. Greater frequency and quality of coaching opportunities. Macam saya kata tadi lah. To team Sukma yang ada pemain wanita, try and give them greater opportunities. Insist that if you're women, you know, bagi peluang kepada this thing. Kalau anggapkan bahawa, kalau dianggapkan bahawa mereka tidak adalah yang terbaik untuk team itu, tetapi attach them, attach them to a senior coach so that they can learn. Right, creation of supportive networks. Ini adalah kemungkinan kena ada uh, panel of coaches di mana you know these young coaches yang yang nak this thing kalau mereka run into a problem or whatever they can contact you and say okay you know uh, how do I solve this problem and things. Like, do you have any suggestions? Because let me tell you, ini bukan sahaja uh, penting untuk coaches yang baru, tetapi even our elite coaches. Kalau mereka pergi overseas and things like that, kadang-kadang mereka buat kawan dengan uh, renowned coaches of the world and they establish contact supaya uh, apa yang berlaku ialah kalau mereka menghadapi masalah dan sebagainya, they can contact them and discuss and get views and ideas. So, ini adalah cadangan-cadangan uh, saya dan uh, saya haraplah dalam AKK kita akan dapat buat beberapa program selepas ini untuk Bukan saja menggalakkan tetapi membolehkan dan memberi peluang kepada wanita-wanita yang berminat dalam sukan untuk berkecimpung dalam bidang kejurulatihan. Terima kasih. Back to you. Thank you, Datuk Marina. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I totally agree with your presentation. Every point that you focus on are us. As ex-athlete, we've been yeah. through that. Kita melaluinya. I'm sure Coach Chu, Coach Yung also melalui sebagai transition, ya. Yeah? As a, an athlete to new life. Life yeah. after sports. Yeah. It could be coaching, it could be sports admin, it could be physio, it could be sports doctor and many more. Tapi women need opportunity. <laughs> What do you think, Coach Chu? Um, bagi saya memanglah peluang untuk menjadi jurulatih uh, di Malaysia ni um, kurang sikit sebab um, 
kita ni tak diberi peluang untuk nak melatih dan sebagainya. Tapi bagi saya, saya rasa saya amat bertuah sebab uh, Sekolah Sukan Malaysia dah Bukit Jaya telah ditubuhkan pada 1996 di mana saya pun mendapat offer sebagai seorang pesyarah di Maktab Buran dan juga sebagai seorang guru di Sekolah Sukan Bukit Jaya bagi saya cabaran untuk saya. Saya pergi ke Kuala Lumpur untuk bertugas di Sekolah Sukan Bukit Jaya di mana 1998 merupakan uh, Commonwealth Games di mana netball adalah satu satu daripada permainan dalam Commonwealth. <coughs> Jadi saya sambut cabaran tu untuk datang ke Kuala Lumpur dan bapa saya pun tak bercakap dengan saya seminggu sebab mengambil keputusan ni tapi saya berani. Dan daripada sanalah uh, saya mula um, Menja- belajarlah untuk menjadi seorang jurulatih dan bagai sekolah dan seterusnya ke peringkat kebangsaan dan juga antarabangsa lah. Hmm. So, saya rasa keberanian perlu ada macam uh, Datuk Marina kata tadi kan, yes we want opportunity tapi bila opportunity come, do you dare to take it to all the women? This is when you have to have the courage, the skill and also passion to do coaching in sports. So Coach Syung, pendapat anda sebagai bekas pemain kebangsaan kini menjadi seorang uh, one of the top women coaches di Malaysia ni pendapat anda tentang courage bercampur dengan skill ataupun I should say certification is that important to have it together? Ya, yeah, sure. Uh, actually I'm, I'm quite uh, lucky uh, since I'm a uh, Uh, is a players i follow by a uh, coach a uh, very famous coach uh, to develop me is a uh, coach Tan Siwa she will he, he always uh, educate uh, us to be come uh, more uh, more skills told me that uh, skills uh, is very important so, of the fundamentals in basketball so I learned a lot from him. I was very lucky, and he also uh, encouraged uh, me to be uh, one of the women coach. Asked me to stand up. You need to be proud of yourself uh, to take it women basketball to be a high level. My aim is go through to Asia, being out the women's team, uh, not in Southeast Asia. But go far away, aim high. My goal This is my aim. Yep. Yes, you can. We believe in you, <laughs> Coach Young, and the women <laughs> basketball as well. This is when uh, mentoring is very important. Whether it's from male or female, it doesn't matter. I yeah. think um, female coaches has to be open to learn as well. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm sure there are many women coaches di luar sana yang punya i sertifikasi kejurulatihan sebagainya. Dan di sini lah. Uh, Akademi Kejulatihan Malaysia beri platform kepada semua julatih sama ada anda julatih peringkat sekolah, negeri dan sebagainya mereka mempunyai sertifikasi kejulatihan jadi kepada mereka yang ingin tahu dengan lebih dekat anda boleh ke website Akademi Kejulatihan Malaysia di bawah Institut Sukan Negara memang banyaklah uh, all the seminars, accreditation, um, coaching certification, sports science dan sebagainya uh, cukup penting ya Selain daripada menggunakan experience kita sebagai atlet or our passion, certification is extremely important as well. So what do you think Datuk Marina? We are talking about giving women coaches all the opportunity. How about support? Can you go a bit deeper support from male role model at home? For example, our father, our <laughs> even boyfriend, husband, <laughs> our uncles, our children, our sons. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I think support from the family is very important. I've been very lucky in my life because uh, I've had a lot of support starting with my own family. And uh, even after I was married, <coughs> I'm one of those lucky people who my mother-in-law told me, he says, you go and do what you have to do. If you're coming to Ipoh, you just bring the children. I'll take care of them and you go do what you need to do. So I believe for a woman to be successful, 
in any field, you need the support of your family and things like that. But uh, on a different level, outside, if you have all the support from your family and things like that, but if you do not have uh, outside support, it may be a bit difficult to go on. So what is happening is right now, the AKK runs a lot of courses, okay? And they are trying to coordinate the national associations to come up with sport-specific courses as well. So if you are seriously wanting to be a woman's coach, equip yourself well, get your certificates, okay? And don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, but always ask and learn. And that is the only way to go forward. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Datuk Marim lah. Uh, my own experience uh, mewakili negara dalam sukan squash uh, sebagai bekas pemain nombor satu negara dan nombor 18 di dunia, pemain untuk 20 tahun, stop pada tahun 2010. Life after sports transisi tu, saya percaya bekas asyik semua uh, agree with me, it's always difficult. We are a bit lost sometimes, some go depressed, a bit of, my, I myself go through a bit of uh, light, light depression before I stop. It's like, where do I go next? And that mm. also I equip myself with uh, my degree in business in UPM, level three coaching certification, sports science, and all these. So support system is extremely important. Uh, we are, I should say we are lucky um, in Malaysia to get a very good support from Kementerian Belia dan Sukan, Badli Sukan Negara, ISN itself, OCM, Persatuan Sukan. But things Don't can be improved. Kementerian yes, KPM, Kementerian Pendidikan <laughs> and KPT plays a, a very yes. important part yes. in terms of education, masuk university, flexibility mm -hmm. dan sebagainya. Yes, we agree with that. Tapi, things can be improved. If not, yes. why the percentage of women coaches are only 20% compared mm. to the men, kan? So, uh, this is when kita nak feedback from our viewers, whether uh, viewers, men or female, doesn't matter mm. because we want to be uh, an open discussion. Kalau ada apa-apa uh, soalan ataupun comments, please ask us because this is a platform for us to share our knowledge and also share our what we feel uh, honestly and um kalau ada wow <laughs> very long okay pokok nyo dia dia berkata saya nak bertanya berkenaan tentang sukan bola sepak kenapa tiada jelatih wanita untuk mengambil bahagian Dalam aspek melatih pemain-pemain wanita terutama pasukan bola sepak wanita Malaysia dan negeri Saranan daripada bahagian pembangunan bola sepak wanita di FAM Menginginkan jurulatih wanita ini melibatkan diri di dalam pasukan-pasukan ini Adakah jurulatih wanita ini belum bersedia dari semua aspek? Saya merupakan seorang jurulatih bola sepak wanita di sebuah pasukan ini di negara ini Terima kasih Terima kasih banyak-banyak pokok Nyo. Um, saya rasa ini adalah satu um, komen ataupun feedback yang memang that's the reality. So maybe Coach Chu, would you like to put in a bit of comments why there are lack of women coaches especially in that question of course it's in bola sepak but generally what do you think? Uh, bagi saya um Pemainan bola sepak ni tidak di, dimainkan di sekolah dan bagi apa kurikulum pendidikan jasmani di sekolah uh, bola sepak hanya untuk lelaki sahaja dan bola jaring untuk wanita sahaja. Jadi di sini tiada syllabus dia lah. Jadi di sini payahlah juga untuk budak-budak apa uh, perempuan untuk uh, melibatkan diri dalam uh, sukan bola sepak. Jadi hanya yang Sekarang ni ada klinik Milo di mana ada futsal di mana sekarang dah ada penyebatan budak-budak perempuan dalam klinik futsal ni. Jadi di sini adalah perkembangan di mana budak-budak perempuan ada peluang untuk melibatkan diri dalam sukan bola sepak ni. Jadi daripada sini saya rasa kita boleh berkembang lagi di mana kita perlu kaji baliklah saya rasa apa 
curriculum uh, sekolah kita ni kan PJ kan bahagian pendidikan adjustment ni di mana bola sepak tu juga boleh dimain di, di, di ajar kepada pelajar-pelajar apa uh, perempuan kita di sana jadi dengan sini bila kita ada base tu foundation tu besar maknanya kita akan dapat apa lebih apa pemibatan lah daripada julati ataupun apa atlet-atlet wanita berkecimpung dalam bola sepak ni saya rasa ini adalah satu ekosistem ya kalau kita yeah. nak lebih banyak julati bola sepak specifically julati wanita then siapa yang dia orang nak melatih so we need the players so the players dari mana of course dari peringkat sekolah kemungkinan ada beberapa perkara yang membolehkan sukan bola sepak dimainkan dimasukkan dalam uh, koku KPM dan juga ada orang kata uh, kekangan untuk meletakkan bola sepak di dalam koku KPM. What do you think Datuk Marina as uh, bekas pengarah bahagian sukan KPM? Okay saya rasa Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia memang ingin menggalakkan uh, recent kemungkinan uh, saya tertinggal sedikit daripada syllabus but Uh, bukan saja bola sepak tetapi rugby juga digalakkan untuk wanita sekarang and I have a few schools that have started uh, playing rugby and they have rugby teams tetapi kalau kita nak uh, ramaikan kejuletihan dalam uh, bola sepak bagi pihak wanita saya rasa macam saya katalah it has to be a discriminatory decision Bermaksud katakan, okay, kalau dalam semua, we have women's football, alright? FAM sepatutnya buat syarat kata, women's football team 20% atau 30% atau 50% of their management and coaching team must be women. Daripada sana, bau akan ada uh, apa yang kita katakan, Uh, usaha untuk melakukan sesuatu FAM pada pandangan saya should contact coaching courses dia punya license C ke license A ke license B ke kalau mereka buat 20 dalam satu tahun kemungkinan 5 buat permulaan lah perluma 5 untuk wanita sahaja so whether they go back and use that license is a different question tetapi kalau kita perlukan kita perlukan we have the women coaches who are qualified who can do it dan kalaulah katakan KPM nak start program besar-besaran they have started we have a women's football team in uh, Sabah Sports School and they did have a league a state league, uh, one state, one team and they had a uh, state but uh, unfortunately all the coaches are men and things like that so I believe if we seriously want to improve uh, women's football we need to be a little bit extreme and do a lot of programs for women alone Ya, yep, hopefully FAM and um, ABS mendengar apa yang dicadangkan oleh Datuk Marina because platform webinar ini of course specifically on women can coach adalah untuk mendapat sokongan ya yeah, whether sports community male or female doesn't matter because this is the reality. Hmm. Women coaches need help and need more opportunities and I should say women in sports industry need opportunities. Uh, I believe Malaysia can do it because we have progressed so much in many ways, facility, our mindset, economy, uh, of course now with coronavirus we are having a bit of challenges but Malaysia is always well known to be open, democratic mm-hmm. open country. So mm-hmm. I think like what Datuk Marina said, policies, a little bit of push, I think it could encourage more women in sports industry. So kita pun nak bacakan beberapa uh, komen antaranya Rohaizat Burhan menyatakan tumpang tanya looks like he's a tennis player very good bagaimana coach wanita menjaga pergaulan semasa atlet 
agar tidak timbul fitnah di kalangan ibu bapa. What do you think, um, Coach Yung? Antara uh, kemungkinan Coach Wanita dan para atlet, you know, male and female, how do you control so that there's no gossip? Uh, regarding the, the fitness? Uh, more on communication, female and male, and how how do we make sure that, you know, there's no discrimination, there's no sexual harassment or things like that? Uh, <laughs> regarding, uh, regarding female, is a, uh, for, for me, it's easy to communicate with uh, females and just talk nicely. They will, they will, <coughs> they will listen to you easily. But depends on male, they will uh, pandai to catch uh, uh, you. you need to <laughs> <laughs> so you need to how to say that uh, regarding the boys. <laughs> Uh, need to control a bit lah. I think uh, obviously it's it's natural lah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, female and male athletes they have their own characters and all. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I believe uh, untuk Rohaizat apa yang dikatakan oleh Coach Yung di sini kemungkinan um, bagi beliau untuk jaga female <laughs> athletes because she is a female uh, basketball coach. coach maybe a bit easier. But this is when uh, Datuk Marina, if you don't mind, sebagai bekas pengetua SSDJ, ya, you have managed male hmm. and female athletes, they have their own ragam and things like that. What's your feedback on this uh, matter? I've managed not only male and female athletes who are not a problem at all because they are like my children, but even though they are like my children, uh, saya selalu mengamalkan uh, menjaga perangai saya sendiri in the sense where I am more likely to hug the girls but I would not touch the boys you know, the boys is kalau dia salam and all these kind of things because I understand mereka ni dah besar <laughs> they are already 13 up to 20 21 and things like that tetapi ada ada uh, masa-masa tertentu dan dalam pengalaman saya di mana seseorang atlet itu walaupun dah 19 tahun semasa saya jadi chef di mission untuk the youth team uh, Asian Youth Games di mana sebelum dia masuk main dia minta cikgu boleh tak peluk saya It was one of my students one of the boys but he asked me that tapi saya pun peluk dia because I look at him as my son it's, it's nothing wrong with them. Dan saya rasa pergaulan, dia bukan saja di antara coach wanita dengan pemain lelaki, tetapi coach lelaki dengan pemain wanita juga yang lebih penting. Because normally, women coaches by the time you retire and things like that, you're a bit distinct. And uh, biasanya lah women coaches, we are distinct. Tetapi kalau kita secara professional, you know your stuff. Okay? You maintain discipline. You don't take any nonsense from the boys. Okay? I don't see any problem. Yeah. And thanks for that feedback. Um, I think that's... Kita te- kena tengok situasi lah. At the same hmm. time, uh, remain professional. I think that's what uh, Datuk Marina wanted to say. Kalau hmm. boleh kita read one more comment before we go to the next topic. M. Rizal Ramli, dia bertanya, one more thing we should consider and look into this matter seriously is coaching competency between male and female coaches. If we look at other country, most national coaches are male. So, Coach Chu, maybe you want to add in a bit on your feedback, competency between male and female coaches. Is that a problem in Malaysia? Uh. In Malaysia, I don't think there's any problem between uh, the male and female coaches. I think we are both equally, um, I mean, uh, good in our job. 
and then also it depends on the sports you see if you start uh, saying about football yeah mo mostly the coaches for football are the male coaches and for the games that is only strictly for women it's the women coaches that are handling the, the team and stuff like that so I think we, 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 we cannot be comparing like male is more dominant than the, the female coaches I think female coaches are pretty are pretty good you know in, in doing their job as a coach yeah uh, in the country we have of course Nora Stila Khalid our at bekas atlet olahraga now a coach we have Delia Arnold national woman coach we have Sarina mm -hmm. in gymnastic we have Daphne Ng and Sabrina they have their own uh, badminton academy Wong Pei Ti Chin Yi Hui bekas uh, at mm -hmm. badminton negara now a coach as well Kim Beli has her own gym and all these things there are many actually uh, not that we don't have good women coaches, but we want more. Again, I go back to that 20%, uh, you know, elite women mm. coaches in Malaysia. What went wrong, whether tak ada opportunity ke, or the women themselves tak berani ambil that opportunity ke, or mm. there's, you know, things uh, that is unreasonable happen ke. So we want to go to the next topic. And uh, thank you very much to viewers, eh who are still with us mm. live the AKK webinar uh, Mind the Gap Women Can Coach with me, Sharon and uh, our uh, very, very expert and famous coaches and also personality, Coach Yung, Co Coach Chu and Datuk Marina. We want to go to the next topic which is high performance female athletes. Well, I believe as uh, level three coaching uh, coach, uh, I got the certification from World Squash Federation as well. My transition, of course, you know, wanted to be National Women Squash Coach. Tak jadi pula because of what I said just now lah. The offer, I feel unreasonable and things like that. So I had my own academy. Pernah jadi jurulate in my own academy. And I feel coaching school kids or juniors, negeri, daerah is totally different from coaching elite athletes, especially the female athletes. Because male and female athletes, somehow they have their strengths and weaknesses as well. Mm -hmm. So this is when uh, we want to talk a little bit more with Coach Chu, who has been a coach in Sekolah Sukan Bukit Jalil for netball for very, very long. So. Uh, Coach Chu, we would like to know what's your feedback on this, especially I should say on your experience from bekas atlet negara menjadi dulate uh, kebangsaan to start with. Uh, okay, uh, bagi saya, um, saya tak pernah lagi menjadi pemain kebangsaan. Actually, saya dah main sampai ke state di mana. Um, Saya diberi apa saya diberi peluang untuk um, menjalani khusus uh, perguruan di Maktab Gurai Muhas sebagai uh, dalam khusus pendidikan jasmani pendidikan kesihatan di mana di sana saya jadikan apa passion saya ataupun minat saya sebagai satu career lah. Di sini um, saya uh, terlibat dalam permainan uh, bola jaring di Pulau Pinang dan uh, daripada sana lah saya menjadi pemain dan juga uh, julatih kepada pasukan uh, MSSPP di Pulau Pinang dan juga pemain uh, remaja negeri Pulau Pinang dan daripada sana saya uh, mengikuti khusus dan sebagainya untuk mempertingkatkan pengetahuan saya dalam uh, permainan bola jaring ini um, daripada sana saya minat saya I mean, tinggi lah dalam lebih kepada uh, kejulatihan di mana saya juga guru PJ di sekolah dan uh, selepas empat setengah tahun um, saya diberi peluang untuk uh, pergi ke universiti untuk uh, mengikuti <coughs> ijazah uh, dalam pendidikan jasmani dan di sana saya telah uh, juga berpeluang untuk uh, melatih uh, pasukan uh, universiti dan berbaik untuk universiti dan sebagainya lah um, bagi saya uh, untuk sekolah Sukan Bukit Jalil ini memang adalah satu platform yang paling bagus untuk uh, permainan bola jaring ini di mana di sekolah sini 
kita, kami telah melahirkan atau saya telah melahirkan dan juga ada juga julatih lain telah melahirkan pemain negara dan di sini uh, standard bola jaring telah semakin meningkat dan kami pun uh, telah dikenali Malaysia pasukan remaja Malaysia memang hebatlah di dalam peringkat Asia ni di mana kami telah mendominasinya sejak 2014 sampai 2013 di mana telah menjadi Johan uh, Remaja Asia, Asia. Eh, untuk 5 tahun berturut-turut dan saya rasa rekod ni tak boleh dipecah lagi lah dan saya merupakan jurulatih uh, pasukan Remaja Malaysia dan kami juga telah uh, masuk dalam uh, Malaysian Guinness Book of Record untuk you know uh, kejayaan 5 tahun berturut-turut lah 5 kali memang hebat lah jadi <laughs> saya pun uh, Respek juga lah kepada pemain-pemain yang telah uh, mem, uh, mencurahkan masa, uh, tenaga dan disiplin kendiri juga penting dalam uh, dalam um, menjadi seorang pemain yang elit lah bagi saya. Jadi bagi saya disiplin diri amat penting. Jikalau pemain tidak boleh nak nak disiplinkan diri dalam semasa latihan dan semasa permainan dan sebagainya, uh, kita tak akan ke mana. Jadi kita perlu uh, sebagai calon jurulatih juga kita perlu ada disiplin diri kita sendiri dan um, pergaulan kita dengan atlet pun uh, perlu kita tengoklah macam mana pergaulannya kan. Jadi saya memang seorang jurulatih yang garang dan maybe aura saya lah eh, yang menyebabkan uh, player bila masa sekolah mungkin mereka takut pada saya tapi bila dah keluar daripada uh, sekolah dan respect tu ada lagi pada kita sebagai seorang jurulatih. Jadi kita kena maintain lah kita punya apa uh, apa image kendiri kita sebagai seorang jurulatih. Jadi di sini um, saya masih I amin mean, dekat negara Asia ni memang uh, bola jari Malaysia memang top lah. Ya. Yeah. Ya yeah, dan saya pernah juga di 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 offer ya untuk melatih pasukan uh, luar negara lah. Jadi saya masih lagi setia dengan Malaysia ni. Jadi masih banyak benda saya boleh buat lagi untuk meningkat lagi apa image uh, apa uh, prestasi uh, Malaysia uh, bola jaring dalam uh, Malaysia ni ke peringkat yang lebih tinggi lah. Itu saya punya cita-cita lah sebelum saya bersara agaknya lah. Tapi tak tahulah, tengoklah mana kepergiannya. Terima kasih. Hmm. Baik dalam tahniah, masa tinggi-tinggi tahniah Coach Chu. Um, sememangnya saya rasa lebih daripada 90%, 98% maybe. Uh, national women, of course national netballers datang daripada sekolah Sukan Bukit Jalil di bawah bimbingan anda dan juga your team. So we would like to congratulate you. Kita harapkan coach seperti anda, role model sebab bukan senang ya untuk develop um, players from sekolah until senior and also mewakili negara so with that we really thank you and hope you will continue your contribution as a, one of the top coach in Malaysia um, selain daripada netball sudah pasti uh, kita ada kita punya bekas pemain kebangsaan dalam sukan bola ranjang ya sekini menjadi jurulatih one of the top coaches as well coach you Coach Yung, boleh ceritakan sikit your transition as our team captain, used to be our team captain in our bola keranjang wanita and then now a coach. Macam mana transisi itu? Uh, I at my transisi. Yeah, your I pray for, yeah, <laughs> I pray for uh, Malaysia uh, for 16 years in. Wow. Yeah, I represent uh, Malaysia for 16 years so uh, for my uh, ecstasy uh, I very bangga la of myself uh, because uh, I have a very good and very famous uh, coach coach Tan Siwa to bring up uh, our women's uh, basketball team to this uh, high level so we, for myself, as a national players, I get uh, four gold medal in South uh, Southeast Asia Sea Game. 
after that uh, 2006 when after Commonwealth game I get a retire so after that I continue uh, become an assistant coach in a uh, women's team so uh, after that I continue my my uh, become a head coach in 2015 Five is a first uh, as a head coach. I get the gold medalist C、uh, game in、uh, Singapore.、Mm. After that,、uh, a big task become a champion defending in two o one seven in KL C game. That's、uh, my very、uh, pressure years. <laughs> Because in a home ground, we we need to defend、uh, these champions. So after that,、uh, I guess succeed in this、uh, this year. I would like to thank、uh, all the support,、uh, especially especially、uh, our Sesh Sesh Division, Dato Marina Chin. We、uh, mm. could encourage me. Uh, don't be afraid, you know.、Uh, so as actually, this is very、uh, memories for this、uh, C game. So I hope、uh, for the futures, I can bring、uh, women's basketball to the high levels. I mean, in Asia. So it's my dreams.、Uh. Thank you so much, Coach Yung,、yeah. and congratulations.、Uh, we are very proud as former、uh, national athlete, kan, the transition to be a good coach, and you were the one that won、uh, on the podium, dapat medal. But now you produce good players, and you see them on the podium is something that coaches dream to see. Actually, for most coaches, to see their anak didik kan berjaya. Uh, the sea games, Asian Games, Commonwealth, even、uh, in the world level, even Olympics as well. So our athletes sekarang pun dah bersedia, dia dah masuk camp kat Bukit Jalil、uh, untuk road to Tokyo.、Mm. So we wish all the very best to our、uh, Olympians who are getting ready for next year in Tokyo for Olympics. Jadi bercakap tentang coaching ni, kemungkinan viewers di luar sana juga nak tahu lah. Untuk coach atlet wanita ni, saya rasa kena ada kungfu sedikit. You have to have some skill to coach women athlete as well.、Uh, maybe Nato Marina, you want to add in a bit apa the recipe to handle women high performance athlete a little bit. <laughs> okay, women athletes. Inherently, are different from male athletes.、Uh, we prepare ourselves differently for competition and things like that. I had a very weird habit when I was competing. For about seven days before my big competition, I started eating less and less and became quieter and quieter. So I believe,、uh, as a coach. As a coach,、uh, you need to understand your athletes. You know, and every athlete is different in their preparation. It could be their physical preparation, it could be their mental preparation, and things like that. But women athletes tend to be a bit more emotional, and、uh, the, the thing, and and you just have to be ready there to give them their support. And、uh, like I said. Not only women athletes. Actually,、uh, a lot of athletes are very sensitive. So it's like you know, you must be ready to give them that moral support, that emotional support, and that's why I say sometimes women coaches are better for female athletes because let's say if if the girls are are, are stressed and and sometimes just a hug will help a lot. Okay, but if you see the male coaches hugging them, you know what will the public think in Malaysia? You know they say, "Oh, what is the coach trying to do?" But we do see it, and we in the sports field <laughs> understand that it there is nothing 
uh, sexual about it. It is just uh, an emotional support. Okay, so just to 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 make sure the parents don't misunderstand and things like that. And I'm sure it's just like women coaches are more sensitive to this kind of needs of the athletes because men coaches tend to be more, you know, it's like, uh, you know, to them being professional means, you know, okay, I tell you this is this, this is this, and, you know, you go ahead. <coughs> but very seldom men coaches will, will ask you, you know, how are you feeling, you know, are you okay, you know, that this thing, you know, what is it that this thing? You know, they will sometimes, they will just tell you, they say, hey, come on, you know, you're going to face a big competition. Forget about all that. But it's not easy to do as you say. So sometimes I feel women coaches handle women athletes better. Thanks, uh, Dr. Marina, for that input. Uh, I totally agree with you because women coaches have uh, ada kebaikan uh, sebagai seorang wanita, jula ke wanita, ya, dari segi komunikasi dan sebagainya. Uh, kemungkinan juga dari segi kegarangan, macam Coach Chu kata, dia ni garang. So that is one of the recipe, ya, yeah, to make sure the team is disciplined, but she meant well. Yeah. At the same time, kebanyakan jurulatih wanita di Malaysia adalah berkelayakan dalam melalui certification, coaching dan sebagainya. Mereka adalah graduan universiti. So, we just need peluang yang sama rata dengan jurulatih-jurulatih lelaki. Pada masa yang sama, ucapan ribuan terima kasih juga kepada jurulatih lelaki yang memberi competition feeling pada kita hmm. because it's Kind of we should look at our counterpart as role model as well. There are so many male coaches who are doing so well. So this is when women coaches boleh menjadikan mereka sebagai role model untuk improve ourselves. But at the same time, before we step in, kalau tak ada peluang, so no chance for us to be there and hmm. improve ourselves and be the top coach in the world as a woman uh, Malaysian coaches. Jadi di, jadi di sini kebanyakan daripada anda yang bersama kami sekali lagi terima kasih. Uh, kemungkinan kita boleh membaca feedback daripada anda ataupun uh, komen ya tentang uh, women can coach ataupun perkara-perkara yang uh, anda fikir isu ataupun kemungkinan ada pendapat untuk jurulatih wanita. Jadi kita nak lihatlah apakah komen di sini. Ada tak komen? Nanti kita tengok kat sini, kita akan pilih komen-komen yang um, boleh membantu kita semualah. Panjang ni, Shim Ismail, uh, ni pendapat dia. Dia kata selalunya jurulatih wanita dijadikan sebagai tangan kiri oleh kebanyakan persatuan. Dan seperti yang kita maklum, tangan kanan itu kebanyakannya diberi kepada jurulatih lelaki. Berdasarkan kepada kelebihan dari segi pengalaman jurulatih tersebut, tapi sebagai sebelah tangan kiri, kita kena ambil sikap positif kerana peranan sebagai tangan kiri itu sangatlah kreatif sebenarnya. Dan kita ambil itu sebagai satu cabaran sekiranya kita tahu apa matlamat atau goal kids. Feedback Coach Shu. So he says that tangan kiri maknanya assistant coach lah. It's a good thing as well. But how do you relate that with opportunity for women coaches to be the leader? Uh, for me, uh, tangan kiri ke tangan kanan ke, saya rasa <coughs> semua pun menjalankan peranan sebagai seorang julatih lah. Di mana uh, sebagai seorang julatih, kita kita kadang-kadang menjadi ketua julatih, kadang-kadang kita jadi assistant uh, coaches dan sebagainya. Tetapi semua tu kita ad, uh, mandangkan Uh, kita nak melatih pasukan itu untuk mencapai sesuatu kejayaan. Jadi kita tak kisahlah sebab sama ada kita tangan kiri ke tangan kanan tetapi kita sebagai seorang jurulatih itu kita perlu menjalankan peranan kita untuk membantu menaikkan uh, prestasi uh, ataupun uh, me mengharapkan pasukan kita itu akan berjaya. Jadi bagi saya saya tak kisahlah tangan kiri ke tangan kanan tetapi tujuan kita kena murni. Kita nak menjayakan hmm. pasukan itu. Thank you Coach uh, Chu. Uh, then, saya rasa itu penting ya. Yeah. Um, we have to be honest. 
with our passion untuk team first, player first. Whether female, male coaches, assistant, bukan assistant too, of course there are things to talk about lah. I setuju dengan anda. Um, apa lagi? Ada komen lagi daripada anda? Kalau boleh bagi komen ya. Eh? Sebab kami di sini untuk mendengar pendapat anda juga. Uh, sebab paling penting ni adalah untuk membincangkan untuk kebaikan semua. Husna Hussein Ali, she said athletes need will be different especially to compete in higher level. The stress is on positive and negative side. How do coaches deal with the negative issues? Any feedback? Uh, maybe Coach Yung. Um, Coach Yung, apa yang dikatakan oleh Husna, bagaimana, how do you help your athletes? You know, especially kalau uh, pressure and all this, the negative side. Macam mana you bantu athlete tu? Oh. For me, when uh, we face a very high uh, uh, competitive, so I just uh, told my players, they are we are also, uh, we are, our body still uh, the same. They have uh, uh, both hands, both feet, same, uh, one heart. And we train every day. It's not to feel to, to play with them. So you mentally, you must think about you is the best. I always told them that. Very good advice, Coach Jung. Believe in yourself. Uh, yep. Something to add, Coach Chu? Um, for me, <coughs> playing, playing. Uh, I mean, on the negative issue, yes, when we play games, uh, when we see our opponent, our opponent is much, much more stronger than us. To me, I always tell them that go in high, proud of yourself. Do not say, I mean, Lose or win is, is another matter, but when you play, you must play to your best uh, potential, you know, and then if you win, it's a bonus and we walk out. If you lose, you walk out of the court proud that you have done mm -hmm. all your best and this is the, the result that we're going to get. So, I mean, reality, we must, we must, I mean, accept reality in, and especially if Malaysia play with Australia in that ball game, you think we're going to go somewhere, but at least, I mean, we have some objective or, or mm. what during the game that when we come out, the objective is achieved. Okay, so result is another thing for me. Can yeah, I look at it? Yeah, sure, sure, Dr. Marina. Okay, this thing's about positive and negative issues. I'd like to remind athletes, women coaches and things like that. It's like um, what your ultimate goal is. Going in for competition is not to win or to lose. It depends on what level you're at. When I was a principal of Bukit Jalan Sports School, if my hockey team goes out, my netball team goes out, well, netball team, I don't have to say there's nobody to compete with them. But let's say the hockey team, the young uh, track and field people and things like that, if they lose a game, it doesn't really matter to me. For me, what is important is that they go in, they play, they learn what they did right, they learn what they didn't do right and work on it to progress. So it's the same way with young athletes. Don't look at positive and negative issues. It's like, you know, you go in, you know, you, you know what you are strong at, what you have done right. That's why I always tell athletes, when you have finished, let's say you're doing high jump, you have jumped, let's say, 180 for a girl, okay? And you immediately, when you finish, you should stop and go through your mind what you did because that will help you to create that mental image so that you can reproduce the same kind of movement to produce the same kind of results. So it's like <coughs> to avoid the negative issues, it's like you must go in with an objective, a goal that is attainable. I am going to go in and run 12.5 seconds. If I run 12.5 seconds and win the gold medal, good. 
If I ran 12.5 seconds and didn't win the gold medal, they came out four. Good. I achieved what I set out to do. That is something I think we should inculcate, especially in our young athletes, because it is very important for them to feel success. If they don't win a goal, you know, they feel that, you know, oh, I failed, I failed, I failed. There's no motivation for them to go on. But if they can see progress step by step, then it will highly motivate them to go on. Yes, uh, totally, Dato' Marina. Um, I guess for younger athletes, reality is reality. Sometimes, you know, not everybody can win gold medal or become world champion. But it's you, your self-worth, setting your own goal. My experience, I represented Malaysia in squash since I was 13 years old, until I was 33. Went through education, university, become full-time player 10 years away from home in Amsterdam with Nicole and also in Belgium. So for me, I just want to share, there's always as our life as elite athletes or as athletes, there's always a balance, the good thing, and also I should say positive and negative. Positive thing is all about winning. You feel good, build your character, become confident. But that's life, right? Sometimes you feel a little bit uh, low, you know, you lack of confidence, especially when you lose. What do you do next? But like what Datuk Marina berkata, kalau kita ada goal kita, walaupun kita kalah, tapi kita mempunyai specific goal. Jadi kalau kita capai, adalah sesuatu kejayaan kepada kita juga. Dan paling penting untuk para atlet, um, the balance of negative dengan positif tu is just part of our journey. Yang paling penting untuk handle when it happens. And I believe that and also I encourage coaches, uh, parents to really support um, kanak-kanak, anak-anak semua untuk berkecimpung dalam sukan lah. Be it untuk menyihatkan badan as a platform of unity, as a platform of character building or even to be full-time athlete. I think sports is something that we are really focusing, especially Malaysia. Dan sudah pasti juga Kementerian Belia dan Sukan ya, memang membantu para atlet bukan saja di peringkat kebangsaan tapi di peringkat negeri. Seperti Sukma di Johor yang uh, tertunda sebab coronavirus akan uh, tertunda hmm. kepada tahun depan. So that is the platform for our young athletes to grow as well in many ways. And back to uh, coaching, yeah? women coaches, uh, especially coaching female and male, I'm sure a little bit different. Bagaimana pula uh, coach Chu, yeah? your experience? What's the difference coaching athlete, katakan peringkat sekolah, daerah, negeri dengan high performance female athletes? Or I should say high performance athlete. Um, for for training dekat sekolah tu, uh, saya rasa lebih senang sebab mereka um, uh, uh, senang mendengar arahan dan bukan kata senang mendengar arahan lah. Mereka boleh apa uh, buat training, uh, mengikut jurulatih uh, tu lah. Dan apabila mereka telah mencapai satu apa peringkat ataupun tahap prestasi yang tinggi for the elite ones, we they, they will they will know, they will start to question, you know. Like, uh, what what can the coach uh, help them to improve? And then there is a two-way communication also. Di mana sebagai seorang jurulatih uh, untuk uh, elite punya atlet, mereka perlu memahami setiap individu itu adalah berbeza. Dan training-training yang di, diprogramkan also akan mengikut apa ke, ke, uh, tahap prestasi atlet itulah di mana kita perlu untuk membantu mereka ke tahap yang lebih tinggi lagi dan terdapat matlamat dan objektif yang perlu kita capai ataupun dalam sukan bola jaring selalunya kita aim for some competition dan sebagainya di mana uh, semua pemain perlu uh, mempunyai satu misi yang sama lah ya jadi dalam pas uh, sukan berpasukan ni dia uh, I think lebih kom- Complicated lah, di mana mereka perlu bersatu sebagai uh, satu pasukan. J- 
Jadi kalau terdapat um, ada individu yang tidak mahu apa uh, melibatkan ataupun playing as a team lah eh. Uh, cohesion of the team tu payahlah untuk kita nak mencapai maklumat itu. Sebab it, it takes um, uh, like in netball it takes seven to play the game lah. Not not only one outstanding player in the court but it takes seven to play the game. If one collapse the whole team collapse. Jadi walaupun pemain yang berde, apa yang duduk di bangku simpanan dan sebagainya mereka punya tahap dan kemahiran itu sama saja dengan pemain the seven main players. Tak ada kata main player ataupun reserve players. Everybody is very important uh, for me lah ya, dekat, uh, dalam pasukan tu lah. Jadi um, as a coach we we need to understand um, how uh, I mean good or, or I mean our athletes in in the sense of their the capability. You know each and every individual is different. So we just need to cater the program according to them and then get them up together as a team for me. Yeah, very interesting, right, Coach Chu, to coach uh, a team and also a team sport and individual sports. Uh, the recipe, the way how you coach it also different. Uh, but I believe with ISN, uh, with sports science, we have uh, great scientists, trainers and all. There are many programs that they can do, especially for individual. Oleh itu, Coach Yung, for your training kan, kita nak tahu bagaimana uh, you menggunakan uh, ISN ataupun um, the education of ISN and also support system from ISN to help your team. Uh, ISN uh, give me a lot of support in, uh, I mean, uh, I, I ask uh, nutrition, uh, sport medical to help my my players to educate them uh, let's say in uh, nutrition they will come over to Maba to let them know how to manage their meal uh, to become uh, the good health in training let's say uh, also the uh, the medical staff will give them a uh, good uh, example to let them uh, become a, a good players how to build up their muscle the things of that yep. yeah extremely very important right it's not just yep. the coach whether male or female i think support system mm. too uh, cukup penting lah antaranya mm. sebab sekarang ni sport science uh, program periodization um, bukan saja skill dari segi yeah. physical dari segi mental sport psychology juga very important and nutritionist yeah. and this is when ISN punya expertise congratulations ISN and um, as well as dari segi management majlis sukan negara bekerjasama dengan ISN KBS Kesatuan Sukan OCM ya yeah. of course macam Datuk Marina kata jangan lupa KPM dan KPT memainkan peranan yang penting <laughs> in education. I totally agree with that. Um, but back to women coaches, of course, we learn from step to step. Kalau 20-30 tahun dulu lagi lah kurang women coaches. But the opportunities is, is getting more and more and lebih ramai uh, wanita berkecimpung dalam dunia kejurulatihan. Tapi masih ada cabarannya. Cabaran memang in front of our face um, but how, what's, apakah solusinya? Jadi kita nak cakap sikit lah tentang cabaran wanita menjadi jurulatih. So Datuk Marina please, cabaran kita ni. Um, cabaran yang dihadapi oleh wanita macam saya kata yang biasa lah. It's the access to facilities and things like that. But um, I think we have to be personally positive and take action. When I first came back from the States, I just finished uh, my career as an athlete, but, and I was working in the Ministry of Education. So I used to go back to my training ground, Kampong Pandan. At that time, it was like, you know, open to everybody. And uh, just did a little bit of light training to keep myself fit. 
And slowly, what happened was, you know, there were other athletes training there on their own and things like that. And they came and asked me, you know, he says, you know, uh, Marina, can you help us? Uh, we want to train, but we don't know what to do and things like that. So I said, okay. I started training with one or two people. Most of them were working in the local banks. And then a little girl in Senate 5, the father approached me. So I, st I started with a little group and it was a really mixed group because I had jumpers, I had sprinters and I had a couple of middle distance runners. But that was the thing and, and we started and uh, after three years, uh, about 50% of them went on to represent the national team. So I believe it is uh, this thing, if you have the willingness to, to sacrifice your time and work with people, there won't be a problem. So in the meantime, although I was a physical education grad from the States, okay, the sports science part was fine, but uh, that time, you know, in, in sports performance, uh, sports science didn't come into play that much, although it did provide a little bit of advantage. So I felt that, you know, okay, I have all this experience of what I did during training and things like that, but now I've got jumpers, I've got middle distance runners, you know, and I've got a little girl whom I can't train like I train like the other athletes. So I started to read, you know, those days it was not nothing on the internet. So you had to go and get books, you know, borrow books from friends and things like that. And started reading, you know, reading. And then I was also very lucky that uh, I had uh, good friends in older coaches, you know, like Mr. Trapadi, there was a Mr. Rajendran, you know, who I could refer to if I was sort of like, you know, stuck and not so used to it. Like because Mr. Trapadi was a, a, a established middle and long distance coach but he was not working in KL at that time. So, you know, I'd call him and ask him, he said, I've got this girl who's doing 800,005, you know, uh, and I'm programming the training schedule like this. Is it okay? And then he'll tell me, he said, yes, you know, why don't you do this thing? In fact, to do development of coaches, the MSN had a fantastic program called Tuna Shumalang, where we had uh, coaches all throughout the country for football, for badminton, for this thing, for young kids, uh, 13 to the age of 15. But we also had a national panel for each game where, when we could afford the time and the finances, the panel would visit the centers and work on the ground with the coaches to help them improve their program. So, so I think, I think to, get to get more women involved, women involved it starts start with the women, women themselves. themselves. You have to be willing to sacrifice, sacrifice you, know? you know, if you can afford it and you can this thing, start small. And as you get uh, more and more experience, you will get more recognized and it, is just, it will just progress from there. Yeah, thanks, Dato Marina. I think that's a very honest feedback from you. Uh, it's all about you want to do well. It starts from yourself. Gemula daripada diri sendiri. Obviously, kadang-kadang um, wanita dalam industri suka ni kata, eh tak ada peluang lah ni, ni, ni lah. Tapi sebenarnya peluang memang ada. Tapi adakah anda berani hmm. ni, maju ke hadapan hmm. mengambil peluang itu? I should say sometimes it's tough, especially uh, women that have family as uh, wife kan, kena jaga anak dan sebagainya. Tapi apa yang dikatakan oleh Datuk Marina, if there's a passion, I'm sure there's a way. And support system from MSN, KBS, ISN uh, sebenarnya membuka peluang kepada semua. Tapi berbalik juga topik tu, peluang ada tapi kita nak naikkan peratusan um, hmm. coaches wanita di Malaysia ni. Balik kepada cabaran tu secara realiti Coach Yung dan Chu yang kini seorang jurulatik melihat sendiri cabaran itu. Jadi kita nak dengar Coach Yung, what are the challenges cabaran terbesar sebagai 
coach wanita di Malaysia? Uh. Ya, Coach Yung. Cabaran sebagai coach wanita kat Malaysia ni. Uh. You, you. You. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> So, so antara cabaran of course tak apa uh, Coach Chu pun boleh tambah sikit lah I'm sure Coach Yung will, will come back to us But apa cabaran terbesar secara realiti ya eh, Sebagai coach wanita in Malaysia now? Hmm, untuk, uh, bagi um, dalam permainan saya Saya rasa uh, challenge yang paling uh, this one adalah uh, Kita tak banyak pakar uh, untuk untuk kita rujuk sebagai uh, kita punya mentor untuk untuk uh, sebagai seorang jurulatih lah. Jadi di sini um, kita perlu apa uh, dan juga facilities lah untuk nak menjalani apa uh, latihan dan sebagainya kurang. Jadi bila kurang sebab bola jaring ni dia perlukan satu gelanggang. Tak banyak pun satu gelanggang dan sebagainya. Jadi bila tak ada apa uh, facilities ini jadi susah uh, untuk apa uh, wanita untuk uh, menjadi jurulatih lah sebab kalau kita tak ada gelanggang dan sebagainya payah juga kita nak melatih kan hanya melatih balik bola aja pun tak ada gunanya kita mesti ada satu apa objektif ke matlamat dan uh, di sini juga um, kita punya um, um, kita kata clubs club Uh, club sistem lah di mana um, kita hanya bermain di peringkat sekolah di mana ada satu kejohanan uh, setiap tahun dan juga di peringkat kebangsaan ada remaja kebangsaan dan dan um, kebangsaan terbuka lah jadi di sini uh, kita tak ada satu platform di mana kita boleh bermain permainan tu sepanjang masa jadi di sini bila uh, pada peringkat ini hanya beberapa jurulatih saja yang betul-betul dapat uh, melibatkan diri uh, untuk uh, menjadi jurulatih lah. Jadi jika kalau kita punya apa club basis kita di mana kita ada perlawanan uh, antara club dan kita kita boleh uh, kita boleh dapatkan lebih banyak jurulatih lah kalau kita go to club punya level lah. Jadi di sini saya rasa kita perlulah um, mengadakan kelab atau sebagainya di setiap komuniti atau sebagainya dan di sinilah kita boleh memperkembangkan lagi apa jurulatih apa bilangan jurulatih wanita sebab dalam permainan bola jaring sekarang ni pun dah ada uh, lelaki pula nak masuk untuk menjadi jurulatih itu yang cabaran pada kita jugaklah di mana kita ni game perempuan jadi jurulatih lelaki pun nak masuk jadi di sini dah, dah terjadi lah dalam apa kejahanan sukma yang lalu tu di mana ada dua tiga jurulatih lelaki saya pun tak faham kenapa majlis sukan negeri mereka nak melantik jurulatih lelaki padahal ada jurulatih wanita yang berkaliber dan memang mampu membawa tim tu tapi saya pun tak tahulah kenapa jadi uh, atas juga pihak pengurusan lah atasan majlis sukan negeri atau sebagainya yang 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 bias terhadap jurulatih wanita pula padahal game tu game wanita jadi saya rasa tekilan lah juga pada apa kat bila keadaan ni terjadi jadi saya haraplah uh, jurulatih di luar sana tu um, lengkapkanlah diri dengan segala kemahiran dan sebagainya untuk menjadi seorang jurulatih yang di peringkat yang uh, antara bangsa ke atau perbangsaan dan sebagainya majukanlah diri sebagai seorang jurulatih Ya yeah, setuju um, sebab kita nak memperkasakan jurulatih wanita lebih banyak uh, jurulatih wanita but at the same time first not just opportunity kan jurulatih wanita tu kena equip themselves lah with hmm. skill, certification Um, your well-being, cara you buat program dan sebagainya baru orang respect 
I think that's the best we can do. Sebab kadang-kadang ni reality ni mindset you tak boleh tukar dalam sehari. Kan? For example in Malaysia, our industry sukan, sports culture semakin meningkat. Tapi kalau nak ikut macam negara seperti Australia, US dan sebagainya, takkanlah dalam sehari jentik dah hmm. jadi sports culture. So this is when we need to work together, whether male or female, especially sports community, we really, really need to work together. Whoever you are, to support sports, be it as a platform untuk kanak-kanak kita jadi ataupun our belia, uh, a platform of unity and also um, as a leader, banyak karakter yang kita dapat daripada sports. And of course lah kan, sebagai elite athletes, elite coaches untuk menaikkan um, nama negara. So I believe eh, Coach Yung, you sebagai uh, ex-athlete sekarang uh, julate basketball wanita negara, um, boleh tak bagi pendapat anda kalau boleh apa yang you, your goal actually for yourself and for your team? Yeah, your dream. My dream actually is uh, in women basketball. Uh, uh, we need uh, parent support, honestly, especially uh, uh, from the parents because uh, we now uh, so little uh, players need to play basketball in our country. So I appeal uh, all the parents uh, to support uh, their kids to get informed uh, to play uh, basketball so we can uh, easy to select the talents uh, from our country. These are uh, my chabarans now, uh, the little amount of uh, uh, women basketball to get involved in our country now. Yep, I agree with you. Uh, it's all about passion, Coach Hume. You know, this is the advantage lah. Uh, being ex-athlete, then transition being a coach or someone who are passionate in sports, whether um, tak, walaupun anda bukan uh, pemain negara, tapi anda pemain negeri, pemain peringkat daerah, juga boleh menjadi jurulat yang hebat. The thing is like that. Tidak semua asik terbaik di dunia yang menjadi Coach terbaik di dunia, not necessary. You, all yes. you need is passion, yes. your skill, your communication and macam Datuk Marina kata, that, um, also Coach Chu, you kena orang kata honest, be honest what you want and hmm. what you want to help others to grow as well. So this is very important. Kita juga nak dengar lah sebab kita dah bercakap seimbang lebih kurang satu jam lebih dah ni. Uh, anda masih bersama kami live di uh, webinar AKK. Thank you very much. Kita juga nak feedback. Feedback daripada wakil Akademi Kejulatihan Kebangsaan tentang objektif mereka. Apakah perkhidmatan mereka kepada para julatih, terutama kepada julatih wanita. Jadi kita nak dengar juga daripada ketua cawangan kepakaran kejulatihan Institut Sukan Negara iaitu Afzan Mahadi. Jadi bila Afzan dah bersedia, kemungkinan Afzan pun uh, boleh bersama kami lah untuk terangkan dengan um, briefly tentang Akademi Kejulatian Kebangsaan. Hai Afzan. Hai, hai Sharon. Ya, yeah, uh, memang kita dah sembang lama jadi kita nak tahu juga <coughs> lah Akademi Kejulatian Kebangsaan memainkan peranan amat penting ya. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Kepada semua, terutama untuk Julate, uh, silakan kemungkinan secara briefly daripada okay. AKK. Okey, terima kasih. Yang pertama sekali saya nak ucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada uh, semua viewers uh, bersama-sama dalam FB Live AKK. Buat julung-julung kalinya kita adakan uh, FB Live ni untuk sharing 
knowledge bersama juratih-juratih uh, luar sana dan kita uh, kumpulkan uh, juratih-juratih prestasi tinggi yang berpengalaman di seluruh uh, negara untuk uh, kita sama-sama membincangkan isu-isu semasa and so on. Uh, di Akademi Kejuratihan Kebangsaan, kita ada beberapa uh, uh, program di mana program tersebut uh, yang terlibat adalah seperti khusus uh, sains sukan level 1, level 2, level 3 di mana khusus-khusus ini diiktiraf uh, penggunaan uh, sertifikatnya uh, dengan uh, Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia siapa-siapa yang nak jadi coach boleh lalui dia khusus yang kita buat uh, dan juga uh, lesen ataupun um, sertifikat yang ada yang kita uh, yang uh, coaches uh, lalui melalui khusus sains sukan di uh, AKK boleh digunakan pakai untuk menjadi jurulatih um, di majlis-majlis sukan negeri maupun di majlis sukan negara juga pihak-pihak seperti NFDP and so on juga menggunakan uh, kita punya sertifikat uh, sebagai uh, salah satu um, syarat utama uh, AKK sebenarnya berada di bawah Institut Sukan Negara, Kementerian Belia dan Sukan dan kami merupakan affiliate kepada International Council of Coaching Excellence yang uh, bertapak di uh, Leeds, uh, Leeds University di United Kingdom. So kami merupakan um, uh, so-called ahli ahli utama kepada uh, ICCE dan um, nak diikutkan uh, untuk program hari ini saya telah uh, berbincang dengan pihak ICCE di mana antara program yang kita buat ni yang jurulang kali kita buat ni di upkan di peringkat international walaupun kita berbahasa uh, Malaysia tetapi the, there is a inisiatif kita yang kita nak pergi kepada uh, think global at local bagaimana yang kita buat di peringkat uh, Malaysia so um, kalau nak diikutkan program-program yang kita rangka bukan sahaja tertumpu kepada uh, khusus tahap uh, khusus sains sukan tahap 1, 2 dan 3 but kita juga membuka peluang dari segi uh, coaching continuous coaching education uh, baik dari segi ilmu uh, sains sukan maupun ilmu kejurulatihan sukan spesifik yang ni kita akan uh, teruskan selepas ini contohnya uh, saya boleh kita boleh menggunakan certain-certain uh, sukan seperti how to be a good goalkeeper uh, dalam sukan bola jaring dalam sukan hoki and so on so dekat situ kita boleh kumpulkan uh, numbers of jurulate untuk mendapat idea-idea baru itu antaranya uh, berbalik kita kepada kenapa setiap um, jurulatih di Malaysia wajar untuk um, melalui ataupun memilih khusus-khusus sains khusus-khusus yang disediakan oleh Akademi Kejuratihan Kebangsaan Institut Sukan Negara yang pertama sebagaimana yang saya maksud, yang saya maklumkan sebentar tadi uh, ISN uh, melalui, AKK melalui ISN Kami merupakan affiliate kepada um, ICCE, International Body dan uh, khusus-khusus yang uh, kami sediakan uh, diiktiraf uh, dal, uh, dari segi um, diiktiraf oleh badan-badan uh, sukan dan NGO juga modul khusus kami ini kami rangka uh, tidaklah 100% uh, sebagaimana di universiti tetapi kita look forward untuk apply uh, latih apa khusus-khusus uh, sains sukan ataupun khusus continuous ni kepada bagaimana jurulatih uh, tersebut uh, lalui uh, latihan and so on. Alright, uh, seterusnya um, di samping itu juga pendekatan teori, pendekatan teori dan praktika kepada peserta dan juga tenaga pengajar buat pengalaman untuk uh, boleh saya kategorikan buat pengalaman dari segi sukan prestasi tinggi dan last kali ia merupakan syarat-syarat utama untuk nak jadi jurulatih di Malaysia. Siapa yang boleh lalui khusus khusus ini Sharon? Sebenarnya khusus-khusus ini boleh dilalui ataupun boleh disertai oleh jurulatih-jurulatih tempatan, oleh atlet, oleh pelajar universiti, uh, tambah lagi universiti uh, pelajar universiti yang mengikuti khusus sains sukan and so on. Dan uh, Bilangan khusus yang kita buat ada di antara satu sehingga tujuh hari. 
Nah, yang ni kita akan buat, uh, kita sedang lakukan dan uh, later on uh, bermula tahun 2021 kita akan go secara online, partially online uh, so that ramai lagi orang-orang uh, di luar sana yang berminat untuk jadi jurulatih boleh lalui kursus-kursus yang disediakan oleh uh, Uh, apa oleh uh, Institut Sukan Negara melalui AKK dan uh, sekiranya orang bertanya berapa kos uh, kos uh, yang kami sediakan ni tak mahal kalau khusus webinar yang macam ni banyak kepada FOC tetapi later on kita akan uh, letakkan bagaimana khusus secara fizikal di antara 150 ke 450 ringgit uh, itu harga yang kita sediakan bagi Uh, meningkatkan lagi uh, prestasi juratih-juratih uh, uh, yang uh, lalui uh, khusus yang kita buat. Alright uh, dan uh, last kali uh, we are actually looking forward untuk developing more female coaches. So networking yang kita develop uh, bermula pada hari ini hopefully dapat membantu lebih ramai peratusan uh, juratih uh, wanita untuk get involved dalam sukan prestasi tinggi mahupun sukan di peringkat grassroots. Itu saja daripada saya Sharon Wee. Terima kasih Afzan. Uh, itulah dari AKK cukup penting terutama untuk coaches mendapatkan kursus-kursus, uh, certification dan sebagainya sebab kalau nak jadi coach yang bertaulia, uh, respected coach whether you like it or not, you have to get certification. I think that's the reality. I'm sure the speakers agree with me as well. The more we learn, lagi banyak kita belajar, lagi banyak knowledge dan apa yang kita bagi dekat para atlet pun memanglah uh, positif juga kan sebab atlet melihat uh, julatih sebagai kakak mereka, uh, abang mereka, ayah mereka, ibu mereka, julatih everything. Sebenarnya dalam hidup saya ni selain daripada keluarga julatih ni I spend a lot of my time with my coaches sebenarnya dengan kemungkinan all our life terutama yang Uh, belajar ataupun tinggal uh, jauh daripada rumah, uh, tinggal dekat SSBJ, dekat Kasar 1, dekat universiti sebagai atlet kan. Memang we spend a lot of time dengan coaches dan teammates juga. So that's very important. Thank you Arzan, thank you AKK uh, melalui ISN. Saya rasa inisiatif yang cukup baik daripada anda, uh, daripada AKK kerana membangunkan lebih ramai Uh, julatih di Malaysia. Baiklah, kita ada lebih kurang uh, 15 minit uh, uh, um, untuk round up our webinar, AKK webinar. Jadi kita nak bertanya kepada Coach Yung dulu. Coach Yung, apa nasihat anda kepada julatih wanita di luar sana? Uh. Your advice. Um, my advice uh, is I'm here to appeal to women from all over the country to come out and participate in sports to, ach to achieve themselves. This is my advice to get uh, hopefully uh, came up more women's coaches Uh, to bring up uh, name of Malaysia together. Thank you. Yes, together of course Coach Yung, uh, we need to work together yeah. you know, to have more quality women yeah. coaches in Malaysia and we encourage them to be in this line, in this industry. How about you? Uh, bagaimana pula dengan uh, Coach Chu pula? Kata-kata uh, akhir nasihat anda kepada Uh, wanita di luar sana yang ingin berkecimpung dalam dunia kejurulatihan? Uh, bagi saya, uh, saya serulah kepada semua wanita di dalam Malaysia ini untuk um, keluarlah, berani keluar menyambut cabaran untuk menjadi seorang jurulatih yang berkaliber dan juga uh, peluang itu ada. Ya? Jadi hanya kita perlu keluar saja untuk merebut peluang itu. Dan di sini dengan banyaknya dengan ada persatuan sukan kebangsaan, uh, majlis sukan negara, institut sukan negara, semua ni akan membantu anda jika kalau anda perlu uh, nak memajukan diri anda dalam bidang kejurulatihan ni, ya. Yeah? Dan dengan dunia sekarang ni, anything lah, you boleh dapat information dan sebagainya dengan sekelip mata aja, ya. Yeah? Dan 
dengan adanya knowledge tu juga tapi kita juga perlu um, ada apa uh, pengiktirafan lah tadi kita perlulah untuk berjalan di kursus dan sebagainya untuk mempertikatkan diri kita jadi benda ni semua adalah atas diri sendiri lah jadi saya serulah kepada semua wanita tu keluar berani menjadi dilatih tak apa gagal kita bangkit semula ya yeah? ya yeah. semua dalam diri tak adalah kejayaan saja kadang-kadang kita pun akan hadapi kegagalan dan kegagalan inilah yang akan membantu kita akan menjadi lebih kuat dan lebih apa uh, meningkatkan keyakinan diri kita lah ya yeah? untuk maju terus ke hadapan sudah pasti sikap berani tu cukup penting ya eh, coach tu <laughs> berani dan garang ha ambil <laughs> Mata terbeliak bila tengok your, your student or, or your players kan. Uh, discipline is very important but again sikap berani, courageous for especially women coaches. And I guess um, secara semula jadi women ni kadang-kadang kita a bit uh, emotional, a bit soft. Soft in a way kadang-kadang kita tak dapat um, quick decision on the spot. Kita fikir banyak. Sebab kita fikir pasal keluarga, kita fikir pasal mak ayah Nak jadi jurulatih, hmm. kena pergi KL Tapi I tinggal dekat Sarawak, macam mana tu And all these things A lot of consideration But again, be brave Take the opportunity Improve ourselves as women coach And people will look up to us Definitely uh, How about you, Datuk Marina? Uh, for you, I think I would like to ask Dari segi policy, dari segi What can KBS MSN, ISN do to encourage or even persatuan sukan ya eh, to have more women coaches in Malaysia. I strongly believe that if it is not a policy matter, nothing will change. Things will go on as it is because unfortunately, a lot of our sports associations are run mainly by men. So to no um, mistake of your own or things like that, it's just like whenever you have high-powered meetings and that, if you don't have female representation at the meeting, uh, quite often things that are good for women or what needs to be considered for women is overlooked. So in sport, I believe it's the same thing. So what I hope, because Malaysia is a country where everything is top down. Ministry of Education, we make policies, we make decisions at the ministry level. The thing trickles down all the way to the school and everything gets carried on. So I think uh, I'm appealing uh, to KBS, you know, especially with themes like Sukma and, and uh, sports teams where you have a strong say. Make a policy insisting on having female coaches, maybe not as head coach, but at least for a start. Women coaches leading women's team at least. For the women coaches yourself, if you are interested in becoming a coach and things like that, please don't think of yourself as a female coach. I am a coach. It does not matter whether I'm training girls or training boys. If we can think like that and prove that we can do it, then people will not look at us as women, but people will look at us as coaches. The doctors have done it. I'm sure during uh, Tun City Asma's time, there were very, very few women doctors. But right now, you know, we have women doctors specialists in everything. Nobody looks at it and says, you know, and says, oh, I don't want to see a woman doctor. I want to see a male doctor. No such thing anymore. Everybody recognizes doctors as equals, whether they're men or they're women. So my hope, my dream in Malaysia is that women coaches will come up to that level and it needs the help of everyone. To start with the woman coach, you must help yourself. Ministry, Kementerian Belia Sokan, hopefully you can make policies insisting 
on having women coaches in women teams or if the woman is qualified to be appointed to a men's team. You know, I think there is, uh, like in track and field, we have, but still not enough. Okay, so to, to push start the whole thing, I think it needs to be a policy matter. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback, Datuk Marina. Um, definitely, I agree with you because things has been uh, this way for very long. Although, uh, kita harus berterima kasih kepada peluang lebih ramai julati hmm. wanita, tapi perlu dipertingkatkan lagi. Bayangkanlah kalau 20 peratus saja julati wanita, terutama dalam uh, julati elit wanita di Malaysia, berbanding 80 peratus atlet lelaki, saya rasa gap tu terlampau besar dan dengan adanya polisi yang perlu diperhalusi oleh Kementerian Belia dan Sukan, saya rasa uh, gap sebegini akan uh, berkurangan dan kita mungkin lebih ramai pilihan uh, julati sama ada julati wanita ataupun julati lelaki. Jadi uh, feedback yang begitu baik daripada speakers uh, tentang cabaran dan sebagainya dan kepada viewers semua kita saya nak simpulkan uh, webinar uh, Mind the Gap Women Can Coach pada hari ini oleh AKT ISN um, of course daripada speakers yang tersoho Julatih Coach Yung iaitu Julatih Wanita Bola Keranjang Malaysia Coach Chu yang um, jadi Julatih Kebangsaan dalam uh, sukan bola jaring juga kita telah lama membimbing uh, para pemain di Sekolah Sukan Bukit Jalil Of course, Datuk Marina Chin, our leader in sports, chairman of APK Advisory Panel, bekas ahli olahraga, bekas pengetua SSBJ, bekas pengarah bagian sukan KPM, also uh, CDM for CDM 2017. Um, daripada wakil APK, Afzan, terima kasih anda sebagai bekas atlet bola jaring negara, we are very proud of you, your transition to sports admin. So yeah. industri sukan ni memang besar. Jadi bukan saja wanita boleh berkecimpung dalam kejul kejulatihan tetapi banyak lagi. Seperti saya sendiri yes. um, dalam bidang penyiaran sebagai broadcaster, bidang perniagaan, uh, sebagai speaker dan sebagainya. Jadi pada hari ini Datuk Marina telah membentangkan keynote uh, dalam developing female coaches. Of course there are challenges uh, there are positive things that we need to look into and of course like Datuk Marina kata tadi maintain is the policy untuk pertingkatkan beri lebih banyak peluang kepada julati wanita. Kita juga bercakap tentang high performance female athletes bagaimana untuk melahirkan dan membimbing female elite athletes dari Coach Yung dan juga Coach Chu pengalaman mereka sudah pasti um, kelebihan Julatih wanita sudah pasti dari segi emosi dan juga komunikasi dan uh, I think relations like that is extremely important. That's the big advantage of julatih wanita dan jangan lupa memang julatih wanita Malaysia berkelayakan with certification. And lastly we talk about cabaran. Um, there are a lot of cabaran but that's the way it is. Macam Datuk Marina kata, we have to help ourselves especially Julati Wanita. What happened happens, that's the reality. But we prove ourselves, we take the challenge. Macam Coach Chu kata, berani mengambil peluang dan go for your dream. And that's what Coach Yong said as well. Go for your dream and help the team as well. So that other coaches and sports community believe in us and also respect the women coaches. Jadi secara keseluruhan, ribuan terima kasih bagi pihak AKK, Institut Sukan Negara kepada viewers kerana mengikuti webinar ini. Jangan lupa ya, uh, ada webinar seterusnya pada 23 hari bulan Jun 2020 pada 11 pagi uh, live FB di Akademi Kejulatian Kebangsaan Facebook uh, tentang komunikasi dan media dalam kejulatihan. Dan saya sendiri akan menjadi moderator dan keynote speaker tentang komunikasi terutama sekali dalam komunikasi media, interviews dan sebagainya. Uh, satu topik yang cukup penting kerana nowadays 
memang pihak media sukan akan melakukan temu ramah sama ada TV ataupun newspaper, majalah. This is when what athletes and coaches need to be prepared. So join us on the 23rd of June, 11 a.m. Ya. Secara keseluruhan, sekali lagi terima kasih kepada AKK kerana menjemput saya sebagai moderator. Thanks Afzan and your Thanks. team. Yep. Thank you very much kepada speakers, Datuk Marina, thank you. Kepada Coach Chu and uh, Coach Yong, thank you very much for your contribution to Malaysian sports and all the very best uh, for the future and we hope that we will continue to bring up Malaysian sports. Secara kesimpulannya, I believe women can coach. Yeah. Yes. Women good. can be a very good coach. We need the opportunity. Malaysia is a democracy country, negara yang adil dan saya rasa peluang perlu sama rata kepada jurulatih wanita ataupun jurulatih lelaki dan jurulatih wanita berkelayakan, bersedia, berani yeah. mengambil tanggungjawab dan cabaran untuk menghasilkan atlet berperingkat dunia untuk menaikkan nama Malaysia. Jadi sampai di sini saja. Terima kasih dan kita jumpa lagi. Uh...